but continue thou in the things which thou hast learned. You've already learned it, but still continue. And has been assured of, knowing of whom thou hast learned. That is the enemy of false teachers. Staying with the same things. False teachers cannot stay with the same things. They look for extra, you know, they want to sound out of this world. They want to sound very deep, very deep. You know, and brother Paul says, oppose them. Second Timothy chapter 4 verse 3. For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine. They will endure it. They are in a hurry. But after their own loss shall they heap to themselves teachers. Having itching ears. Look at the next verse. And they shall turn away their ears from the truth. And shall be turned unto fables. They are restless. They are not patient. They are not ready to stay and be taught. Sound doctrine that they will not endure means wholesome, thorough, comprehensive. Sound, wholesome, thorough, and it takes patience painstakingly to sit down and be trained in sound doctrine. Anyone who remains sound must ensure he doesn't veer off. He won't learn from his teacher forgiveness of sins as a gift from God. Then he now goes out and says there is no sin again. There is no sin again. But that's not what we taught. What we taught is that forgiveness of sins is a gift from God. But because he's ambitious as in a hurry, is in a hurry, in a hurry he now goes out to begin to shout no more sin. No more sin in the world. But that's not what we thought. So originally and automatically becoming a false teacher. He won't learn from his teacher. Christ took the punishment of sins for everyone. Then he goes out to be announcing everyone is saved. Everyone is saved. But that's not what we said. What we said is that Jesus took the punishment of sin for everyone. He now took it without waiting to understand the implication of that sentence. He now goes out very excitedly announcing everyone is saved. Such a person has applied to become a false teacher. He will not conclude that sin is dead. Nobody said that. We never taught that. Those are itching ears. Or no more Satan in the world. Nobody said that. That's not sound teaching. That's not Bible. The imputing of sins on Jesus. And how Jesus defeated Satan. Then he now goes out to say no more Satan. He's not listening. He's not listening. In Bible teaching you must pay attention. And don't be in a hurry to arrive at conclusion. Before the teacher concludes the subject. He won't also say because we no longer ask God daily to forgive us our sins. He now ignores that believers sin and should admit to fellow brethren. Bible says confess your fault one to another that you may be healed. See that? So he will not wait. The moment we say there's no more confession of sins, he concludes that is it. But he will not wait for us to also teach him that as much as we do not confess sins to God because of what Jesus has done, yet we confess sins to one another. We confess our wrongdoings to one another that we may be healed. But he has itching ears so he will not listen. He just takes what sounds nice and he runs off. He won't teach against supplication in prayer because now he has learned that all things are yours in Christ. He has learned that you can claim and give thanks. Then he now says, no more prayer, no more supplication. But that's not what we taught. He's just itching ears. He's just an ambitious person who is not willing to calm down and be taught to calm down and learn. He will even deny the place of fasting. No more fasting. But that's not what we taught. He will deny the place of sanctified living. That is, you can live anyhow. If somebody asked me in one of the house centers where I went to visit. You know, a sister said, so now that we are born again, we have received the grace of God, does it mean we can just sin anyhow? 
So I now ask her, why do you want to sin? Why do you want to sin? She said, no, you know, because Jesus has done it all. I said, so is that why you want to sin? Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? What was Brother Paul's answer? God forbid. What was the explanation? Know ye not that as many of you as were baptized into Christ were baptized into his death, sin shall not have dominion over you. You are not a servant of sin. You are a servant of righteousness. You are a servant of righteousness. You serve the righteous purposes of God. But when they do not listen, they take something and begin to run off out of ambition. You know, he won't call our teaching of submission. Or he even calls, they even call our teaching. When we teach submission, loyalty in the church, they say it's control. We are trying to control people. Just control. But loyalty and submission is sound apostolic teaching. Sound ap And this loyalty and submission is in the local church. In the local church. You know, they deny the importance of apostolic teachings. And they deny the importance of the local church. They say, you don't need any local church. Jesus is your pastor. Those people are people with itching ears. You know, he hears us say, well, the Old Testament is the partial revelation of God which Jesus came to give a comprehensive picture of. Then he concludes, the Old Testament is useless. We don't need the Old Testament anymore. Yeah, the Old Testament is useless. Who said that? Nobody said that. We, I never said that. The Old Testament can be useless. It is the canon of scripture. That is, the Old Testament is the canon from where the New Testament is drawn. So how can it be useless? That's why we took time to teach on understanding the old and new covenant for 35 hours. He won't listen to that one. He will only pick the cliche, we don't need Old Testament again. Who said that? Nobody said that. I never said that. Never, never. I teach from the Old Testament via the glasses of the New Testament, which is Jesus, the revelation of the scriptures. He will hear us teach on generosity and giving, and that in the New Testament, there's no more tithing. Then he goes out to say, no more giving. We no more give. No more giving in the church. No, we don't give again. It's Old Testament. No, nobody said that. We said that in the New Testament, we do not give percentages. We give generously. We give freely. We give in appreciation. And we give by the maturity of our understanding of God. It reflects in our generosity. The New Testament is replete with giving, giving, giving. Churches gave out of their deep poverty. Churches gave and gave and gave once and again to brother Paul. They gave to Jesus. They gave to the ministry of Jesus time after time. And he collected. He collected. People brought to Jesus. He collected. Rich people brought. He collected. Poor people brought. He collected. Jesus, who is the foundation of the New Testament church. But when they do not listen to us, they just catch one thing that is exciting their little brains and they run with it and conclude no more giving in the Old Testament. All in all, he will be denying obvious, I'm talking about a false teacher, he will be denying obvious scriptural emphasis just to make a point. You know, anytime someone does that, he is applying to be enrolled in the association of false teachers. He is applying to be enrolled in the association of false teachers. A threat of false teachers is denial of the obvious facts recognized in scripture. A denial of the obvious facts recognized in scripture. You know, you hear people say things like, we won't die. <laughs> we won't die. We won't die. We have mortality. We will drop this mortality and we are immortality. We have eternal life, but this body is not eternal. But when they do not listen to teaching, they just carry things and be running around. You hear people say, we can't sin. We can't sin. We can't lack. And then when a believer is sick in his body, they say it's because he has sinned. Otherwise, if he has not sinned, why should a believer be sick? You are wearing mortality. You are wearing mortality. 
That is why it will be dropped so that immortality can swallow mortality. In 2 Timothy chapter 2 verse 19. Nevertheless, the foundation of God standeth sure, having this seal. The Lord knoweth them that are his. And let everyone that nameth the name of the Lord depart from iniquity. He was referring to doctrine. They were preaching denial here. Threats of false teachers. False teachers go around saying, no more sin. They go around saying, no destruction of the unbeliever. God cannot destroy the unbeliever who rejects the gospel. They go around saying, no more Satan in the world. I don't know where they got that from. They go around saying, no need for church gatherings. No need to gather as a church. You are the church. Jesus is your pastor. Where is that madness coming from? They are not paying attention to obvious apostolic doctrine and instructions. He had things like, no need to submit to church leadership. They go around with all those kind of things. In 2 Timothy chapter 2 verse 18, he had brother Paul's warning to Bishop Timothy. Who concerning the truth have erred, saying that the resurrection is past already and overthrow the faith of some. What they are saying is that there is no more resurrection, what we call rapture. They go around saying, no more rapture. Uh -uh. No more rapture. It's very obvious in the New Testament. The Lord himself shall descend with the sound of the trumpet. The dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we which are alive and remain shall be changed in a moment. In the twinkling of an eye. Mortality shall put on immortality. Yeah, corruption shall put on incorruption. I mean, it's so obvious in the New Testament. But because they are not patient to be taught... They are ambitious. They are in a hurry to teach something so that they will sound unique. They will sound different. They arrive at such unscriptural positions. 1 Corinthians 15, 12. Now if Christ be preached that he rose from the dead, how say some among you that there is no resurrection of the dead? These folks started listening to and following Paul till they made further research. They were following Paul and learning. Then they made further research. A desire not to be found quoting anyone. Or preaching. You know, they don't want to preach like anybody. They just want to be different. That's what brings all this madness. You know, we have seen that the catchment area for false teachers is the arena of adventurous believers. When believers are always looking for adventure. They become victim in the hands of false teachers. Acts 20, 29. For I know this, that after my departing, shall grievous wolves enter in among you. They shall come into our camp, not sparing the flock, drawing away disciples after them, and not after Christ. Believers who want to hear something extra fresh, becomes victims of such false teachers they will not endure sound doctrine so no all of a sudden they are no more satisfied to be called new creature they want to be called god breed god breed some kind of strange names they want to hear things that are sensational and brother john brings out same pungent observation of the emergence of false teachers in second john chapter 1 verse 9 whosoever transgress it and abided not in the doctrine of Christ. The word abided is critical. And abided not in the doctrine of Christ. The teaching of Christ had not God. He that abideth in the doctrine of Christ he had both the father and the son. The term transgress in the Greek is the word proago. Proago. It means to advance. It means to move further. False teachers always want to add to what they have had. When we teach them something, they must add something so that they will sound different from us. Or they will remove something. And in removing something, they have tampered and mutilated the message. But all is ambition and a way of trying to sound different. They ignore the fundamental. They don't like being simple. John says... Don't beat them good journey. Second John 1 10. 
If there come any unto you, and bring not this doctrine, receive him not into your house, neither bid him God's speed. Look at verse 11. For he that biddeth him God's speed is partaker of his evil deeds. Don't welcome them. Don't associate with such brethren. They are brethren. They are not unbelievers. But they have itching ears. They are so impatient. They cannot endure a teaching series. They only peep in and peep out. They appear once in a while and jump out. And then they take something off context. Very dangerous. Very dangerous. They often go deeper and deeper. Till they are drowned. They go deeper and deeper. Till they, they are drawn in their confusion. The word proago is to make more research. They like to make more research. They go into extra biblical sources. Books. Academics. Just to wow men. They begin to look for extra biblical material. Eventually, they upstage the place of Christ. Eventually, they upstage. Suddenly, you will not hear Christ again. It's all their, all their cacophony of noise. All their useless discoveries. Plain nonsense. Idle fancies. Oratory. Useless philosophy. And not after Christ. As soon as Christ is not the focus of your teaching. You are on your way to false teaching. When your opinions weigh above truth. When your opinions are more important, your dreams, your visions are more important than the word of God. You have joined the club of false teachers. And the opposite of proago is to continue. Abide. Stay in the doctrine of Christ. The original word mone. Abide. These people proago. But they are supposed to mone to abide. Second John 1 11. For he that bideth him God speed is partaker of his evil deeds. First John chapter 2 verse 19. They went out from us, but they were not of us. For if they had been of us, they would no doubt have continued with us. But they went out that they might be made manifest that they were not all of us. This refers to folks known for the gospel earlier on. The issue is they pro-ago. They pro-ago. As a general rule, you must know that the only men that are commissioned by God to give us the truth of Christ have done so centuries ago. The only men that are commissioned by God to give us the truth of Christ have done so centuries ago. About 2,000 years ago. Look at 1 Corinthians 3.10. According to the grace of God, which is given unto me as a wise master builder, I have laid the foundation, and another builded thereon. But let every man take heed how he builded thereupon. Next verse. For other foundation can no man lay than that is laid, which is Jesus Christ. The only foundation is Jesus Christ. Past tense. Laid. Other foundation no man lay than that is laid. Ours is to build on what they have written and to follow. Look at Ephesians 2.20. Brother Paul will write, And are built upon the foundation of the apostles and prophets. Jesus Christ himself being the chief cornerstone. Our revelation today is not to discover new things. But understand what the apostles wrote in the epistles. Understand what the apostles wrote in the epistles. Look at Ephesians chapter 3 verse 4. When you read, brother Paul is writing now. You may understand my knowledge in the mystery of Christ. Next verse. Which in other ages was not made known unto the sons of men. As it is now revealed unto his holy apostles and prophets by the spirit. The moment you start equating yourself with the apostles of the Lamb, the 12 of them, you are in serious danger. Everybody should be careful with you. 
It is not worthy that even as at those periods, you know, the apostles said even they themselves were not permitted to add anything. The apostles, that's why Paul said, though we, Paul said in Galatians 1, 8 and 9, though we or an angel from heaven preach any other thing to you than that which you have heard, let him be a cause. They, the foundational apostles of the New Testament, couldn't even alter what they had said. No liberty to say anything new. How much more today? So watch out for anyone who despises Paul so as to make a point. He derides James foolishly as someone to do so they can preach a non-biblical grace message. He mocks Peter by saying Peter didn't get all the truth. Watch such people. Soundness is to teach all of God's counsel. And all of God's counsel is the revelation of Jesus Christ. Glory to God. The revelation of Jesus Christ. Romans 16, 25. Now, to him that is of power to establish you according to my gospel, apostolic, which is the preaching of Jesus Christ, according to the revelation of the mystery, which was kept secret since the world began. Look at Colossians 1.26. Glory to God. Even the mystery which had been hid from ages and from generations. But now is made manifest to his saints. Next verse. To whom God will make known what is the riches of the glory of this mystery among the Gentiles. Which is Christ in you the hope of glory. Next verse. Next verse. Whom we preach. One in every man. And teaching every man in all wisdom that we may present every man perfect in Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. Our message is the whole counsel of God revealed in the person of Jesus Christ. Glory to God.